Welcome everyone. Uh, today we have Airlock, a team that uh, we discovered at the hackathon in Toronto in Crypto We Trust. Uh, joining me today we have uh, John, Alex and Zach. John, you want to introduce yourself quickly? Sure. My name is John Garrett. Uh, I currently live in southern Ontario, Canada and uh, I'm an IT professional uh, by trade uh, with a focus on the physical electronic security industry. Awesome. Uh, well, you, Alex? Uh, I'm Alex Leverington. I'm born and raised in Texas, and uh, I'm the programmer on the team. Okay, and uh, Zach? Hi, I'm Zachy. I live in Toronto. I'm a software developer. I have a background in computer science, uh, and I've been into wearable technology over the past year. Brilliant, brilliant. So can you guys tell us a little bit more about your project, the elevator pitch, so to speak? Sure. Essentially, um, what we're trying to do at the very basic level is to um, integrate uh, Raspberry Pi with a, a Ethereum contract. Uh, basically, we have a piece of software that uh, would run on the Pi and it would monitor the state of a contract and uh, the output on the GPIO uh, pins of the Raspberry Pi uh, would trigger based on the state of that contract. Cool. So, are you are you guys trying to say decentralize Airbnb, for example? Absolutely. That's uh, was our use case scenario that we used at the at the hackathon, and um, it's uh, one of the most applicable uh, use cases that we were able to come up with. Brian, Brian. Um, so, if you if you plan to decentralize Airbnb, then all all transactions will be peer to peer, so to speak. Then. Correct. And. Um, well, how do you monetize something like this? That's a common uh, question that people have about Ethereum or Ethereum-based applications. The, uh, we, can, we can monetize that through services, uh, also through the contracts themselves, um, requiring a fee to execute the contract. Um, it, it depends. Uh, it, it sort of depends on the property and, and how it's locked up. Um, <clears throat> And uh, and of course, going and selling the hardware and installing the hardware as well. Um, but there's a couple of avenues for generating revenue from it. Cool. So you're talking about hardware, John. Can you uh, maybe show us what what it looks like? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, what we have uh, right now, obviously, is nothing that we've designed or manufactured. But it's uh, kind of the tools of the trade for the industry I'm involved in. So. Uh, basically, what we're looking at here, uh, what I'm going to focus on is the electronic strike here. And basically, it uh, just replaces a standard non-electronic strike on a door. Uh, and when voltage is applied to it, it unlocks. Um, it's essentially a very uh, simple product in and of itself. Uh, now, there's also other things that uh, uh, can be on the door um, as far as a, a door contact can monitor the state of the door, whether it's open or closed. Um, as well as other inputs that, that can be utilized as well. Brilliant, brilliant. So the Ethereum is, is Ethereum, the plan is to have Ethereum on the Raspberry Pi itself. Uh, correct, or, or a version of uh, an Ethereum client, yes. Oh, that's very uh, interesting. Then, just to add to that, we're not really focusing specifically on Raspberry Pi. We're looking more broadly at sort of the Internet of Things and uh, embedded systems. So. Wherever we have kind of microcontrollers, uh, which are kind of crypto secure, that's the direction that we want to go and where we can run um, you know, software that is speaking to Ethereum uh, on embedded systems. Uh, so what you're saying is it could be applicable to say something like zip cars, for example. Absolutely. Right, exactly. Yeah. Wherever, we can, wherever we can get a microcontroller with an embedded software system running, that's kind of uh, the space that we're looking at. And just to kind of go a bit broader than Airbnb, that's, as John said, one of the, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the more commercial applications that, are, that will resonate with a lot of people when you try and explain to them what we're trying to do. But effectively, what we're looking at is the intersection of um, smart property, the sharing economy, the Internet of Things, and then, of course, um, the new generation of, I guess, uh, the blockchain te te technology. Right, so we kind of sit in the sweet spot of uh, of these spaces. Do you, do you have any other um, sort of application that comes directly to mind in terms of what you could do with that type of technology beyond opening doors? I mean, is it? Well. I mean, we've looked at, uh, we've explored the idea of lockboxes uh, in urban centers as one of the areas that uh, would be interesting to look at. Uh, at this point, uh, given the early stage of kind of uh, where the uh, 
where the technology is and uh, where the adoption in the mainstream is, uh, it's it's going to be very interesting to see which areas kind of uh, we get most traction in. I suspect it'll be um, it'll be uh, it'll be in communities where uh, Bitcoin and you know Ethereum is going to be widely adopted. And on the other side, it could potentially be in spaces where there is a need for or a desire to kind of push the the kind of the the standard of security away from what is out there in the market today um, to something more secure and something decentralized. Uh, brilliant. Uh, do you have, uh, so you're, you guys are officially a startup. Are you looking for investors? What, what's your plan basically? Yeah, so right now we're a founding team of four. Uh, it's myself, Alex, John, and Nate. Um, we came together at the hackathon and coming out of it, we had a really good dynamic. So we decided to continue with, uh, with building out the technology and exploring the, uh, the ecosystem and the community to see what type of support we'd be getting. Uh, so far, we've uh, we've gotten some good interest from some of the local kind of uh, Toronto-based um, incubator spaces that we're looking at uh, uh, kind of getting into, so that we can step it up from where we are right now and kind of formally incorporate and uh, move forward and uh, have some sort of uh, short-term milestones for three months. At which point, you know, we expect that some of the underlying technology would, uh, specifically Ethereum, would be further developed and the market would be clearer for us. So we're looking to get onto that track of, of getting small rounds of investment so that we as a team can get started, potentially grow the team a little bit and, uh, you know, get, I guess, uh, some proof of concepts or some, some, uh, you know, some co-working spaces uh, set up with uh, kind of contract-based decentralized electronic security systems. Ah, that sounds great. Um, so in terms of where people can learn more about your project, maybe follow your progress, is there a website or a GitHub repo or Twitter you, you guys would like to mention? Yeah, we have a, our website is up. It's airlock.me. Uh, right. There's some information about us, a little bit about the, the pitch that we have uh, uh, going in at the moment. Um, and hopefully we'll be updating that with some... Uh, some content about what we're doing, where we are. We have a little blog going, so it's still early days for us. Um, but this, you know, this is kind of how things start. Brilliant, brilliant, cool. There's, there's also uh, we have a GitHub account, <clears throat> GitHub.com forward slash air dash lock. Uh, and right now, the the only thing we have posted there is the Ethereum code required to watch the blockchain contracts for triggering the GPIO. And um, and I'm sure we'll be posting some other things up there as well um, as we get them tested and built out. Great. Well, that sounds that sounds all great, guys. I'll put the link into the YouTube video description. And uh, thank you very much for your time today. And I'm sure we'll uh, catch up with you soon. Yeah. Thank well, you, what's, is Nate? Are you on the line? Oh, he Nate couldn't. He couldn't. We couldn't get him. Nate couldn't no. make it, unfortunately. Oh, that's too bad. Nate is really kind of uh, one of uh, our founding members who's got. A lot of interest in the space and has really been uh, it's kind of on the visionary side of our uh, thinking here. So we've been good to have him, but maybe he'll uh, share some of his thoughts in a blog post, which uh, we can share with. That you. would be that would be great. Yeah, a blog to track your progress would be wonderful. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Brent, well, thank you very much for your time today, guys. We're just under ten minutes, and uh, I'm sure we'll speak to you soon. Thanks, Stefan. Bye bye. Thank you, Stefan. Bye, guys.